Tunde, thank you so much for coming to the podcast. So glad you're here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, especially the, when we are recording is Black History Month. Mm -hmm. So really excited to have you here. I always try to bring black artists or, you know, color artists, other color artists here on my podcast, as I myself, I am a Latina. So I appreciate you coming here. And as you know, people can listen in the future. But as we are recording here is Black History Month. And mm -hmm. um, I appreciate you being here with me. Oh, thank you. Thanks for inviting me. Yeah. So tell people yeah. where you where you are from, like where you're talking from with me. Uh, I live in Dayton, Ohio. Uh, so we're in the midst of winter here. Pretty I'm cold, not... I was going to say. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's actually not been too bad. Mm. Um, you know, oh, it's, really? we had a terrible snowstorm last year. Yes. Last week, but... You know, it, outside of that, it has not been too bad. It's probably in the 40s today, usually. Oh, really that's cool. good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I've, yeah. you know, I live in Florida yeah. now, but I live 16 oh. years in the cold, so I know how it is. Oh, so yeah. 40, we are like, yay. <laughs> yay, it's, it's warm. But yeah, I'm originally from Nigeria in West Africa, so, oh, cool. um, but I've lived in the U.S. since I was a young teenager. So, oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. So, Amazing. I, so um, tell people a little bit of what kind of art do you do? Okay, so um, for the most part, I do, I do printmaking. Um, so block printing primarily and mm -hmm. also screen printing. Um, so for me, it was just a means to print on fabric. I mm -hmm. was really interested in surface pattern design. Mm -hmm. And um, since I didn't know anything about producing fabric, I said, well, the shortcut to what I want is to do it myself. So that's how I started, um, you know, creating abstract designs mm -hmm. and uh, carbon blocks and putting them, printing them directly on fabric. Yes, mm -hmm. and I'm gonna show here uh, in a little bit for the video for the Patreons, your fabric store here. And I was just, ah, amazing fabric. <laughs> um, yeah. So, we had, um, when this podcast is going to go live, we already had um, Sarah Matthews here, which is an amazing uh, block printer as well. Yes, and yes. Uh, she oh. was the one that kindly shared your art with me. And I was oh, like, oh, my goodness. <laughs> and and yeah. how did you, so we talked about how she got excited in interest in that kind of thing. So how did you get interest in specific this and when you thought okay why did you think like i want to do fabric you know or i want to work with this surface kind of printing um yeah so like i said i'm originally originally from nigeria mm -hmm. so i'm a part i'm of the yoruba tribe mm -hmm. and our culture fabric and art features very prominently um, so yeah, we have a, you know, fabric is a very central, uh, theme in our lives. We have traditions revolving around that. And the clothing, getting... right? Cause when I see people yeah. from Nigeria, the women are always so beautiful with yes, you know, the clothing, dark, the color. Yes. I love so that. that me head a lot. The headrest, yeah. uh, gala as it's called a bright, bold colors, vibrant mm -hmm. pattern, you know, so I grew up around that. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. I wanted to see that interpreted in home decor. Mm. And so when I first got started, that wasn't, you know, of course not African print is all yes. the rage in home decor. Uh, but when I first got started, I thought, oh, this would be great to interpret those motifs in bright, vivid colors. Even till today, when I start um, creating a piece of art, mm -hmm. I always reference um, the colors I see in uh, African brides. If you go to Pinterest and just put in African bri or Nigerian brides, mm -hmm. you will. You're, it's a feast for the eyes. So mm -hmm. a lot of colors, a lot of yes. You know, I just want to create things that make that incite happiness. You know, yes. I get happy when I see those colors. Oh my gosh. Yeah. yeah. And I have to say, I'm really close to these patterns and colors because I am originally from Brazil and mm -hmm. uh, people don't know, but Brazil has uh, the most black population after yes. Africa. 
No, did yeah, I say and there's a Africa. Big connection between Nigeria yes. and Brazil. Yes, I was going to yes. say that there is a lot of people in Nigeria there. And also we have mm -hmm. a state called Bahia, which is the center mm -hmm. of the black culture in Brazil, because okay. and the reason why is when in the history, when the slave uh, ships came, they arrived in that part of Brazil. So right. uh, because of that, we have in Rio, which also has a very large, uh, I'm, I'm from Rio de Janeiro, um, oh. I was born there. So in Rio, there is also a large black population. And when we mm -hmm. have the African, you know, we have some kind of foods related to black yes. orange and, and they yes. sell some, they wear some traditional clothing when they're selling the food. And, mm -hmm. you know, all opulent. And of course, people sometimes know that because Carnival, but we, mm -hmm. as people that live there and grow up there, we see that in the black people there, yes. that they wear this traditional colorful and Bahia mm -hmm. is just amazing with the colors and all remember a little bit Nigeria and remember all these African countries, uh, you know, where they yes. are origin There's from. So many connections there. I was watching uh, some documentary, and um, I think it was on the Food Network. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they talked about, like you said, akaraje. Yeah. And I'm like, we have yeah. the same exact dish. We yeah. call it akara. It's yeah. the exact same thing. In Portuguese, you know? we call akaraje. Yeah. Yes. So, so many similarities. And also, yes. my yeah. husband, he plays capoeira. Oh, so, yes. Has been, yeah, he's been doing capoeira for like 20 years. Yes. So he's Dominican. Yeah, in my house, I never played capoeira. I wish I would. But <laughs> my, my, in my house, my father liked so much capoeira. He, um, he had the instruments. We had the instruments at home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we have those. The yeah, berimbau. Yeah, the berimbau. Yes. Yes, yeah, yeah. so many connections. So in Brazil, I think... People don't know, but we are very connected with black culture there. And of course, mm -hmm. it's in our heritage. It's everybody yes. in Brazil, I think, has a little bit of black person in them. Yep. So uh, there is no escape from it. Right. <laughs> um, so, but where did you have any knowledge how to do block printing or did you learn that? Um, well, I, my, my degree is in graphic design. Ah. So yeah, when I was in school many, many, many moons ago, uh, we had to do, we had to rotate through different um, art forms mm -hmm. and uh, we did printmaking. So I don't, we didn't specifically do block printing, but we did like the um, etching, the metal plates, rolling mm -hmm. it through the print press, all that. So that mm. you know was already in the back of my mind and you know also when you're young you do like the potato printing where yes. you carve up a potato and yeah. you can stamp on fabric with it but really um as an adult somehow i stumbled upon uh, a designer named uh, lada john's daughter um she's a scandinavian uh textile designer mm. she lives in new york um mm. But I was so fascinated with and drawn to her work because it was very simple, very, um, the, it was just lines, shapes, you know, and she, you know, I got her book, which I have all my books behind me. You can't really see it, but I got her book and uh, I was like, huh, this is fascinating. I was so fascinated you were like uh-huh that. that's that's yes. what i want I was like, this is it you <laughs> this know, is I it. Print fabric at home uh-huh you know so that kind of was the portal this was you know back in the early aughts before we had you know instagram mm, yeah yeah Pinterest, all that stuff so i think maybe it was her i can't remember how i came across her mm -hmm. but i got a chance to meet her in new york uh one time in 2009 mm -hmm. uh mm -hmm. at a uh renegade craft fair mm -hmm. and so she did a little um block printing workshop or a printmaking workshop there so yeah it was just a combination of you know things i had done at school uh finding you know an artist doing the same and that got me really interested i was interested in screen printing mm -hmm. originally but it, it's so much more technical and it took me a while to really understand how it works. Um, 
because I didn't go to school for that. Mm-hmm. I, I was all self-taught, mm-hmm. you know. So, but, but I'm the type of person. If I'm interested in something, you go for it. I will research it and figure out how to do it. Yeah. yeah. And do you print at home? Like, do you got the the machine? Or because when I was talking to Sarah, because she works in a place that that do this kind of stuff, she uses the mm-hmm. the big machine there, right? Okay. Okay, the press. No, I don't have any kind of press. Um, it's all manual. Um, oh, and you do manual? Yes. Wow. So up until middle of last year, mm-hmm. my studio was in my home, which is where I'm sitting right now. Wow. But in June, I moved and got a space outside of the house because my things were just kind of taking over. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't have like big, heavy presses or anything Mm -hmm. it's all done by my hands (laughs) and you carve. we're gonna show your instagram in a bit so you carve as well your your you know your stamp like your foam things right yes i carve um is that what i've I've done linoleum yeah yeah i was going to say it was linoleum that you tried before yeah i've done linoleum but i don't I don't too much carve linoleum anymore because Mm -hmm. there's other softer materials yeah I can use, um, but linoleum is where I got my start. Um, I also use a uh, rubber like material called soft cut or yeah, so, um, the pink one. Masks. I have that, yeah. yeah, yeah. You can get those on like Amazon, yeah, They're like erasers. I've carved erasers, yeah. Um, I also use craft foam, which is a slightly different process. It's not so much carving, yeah. it's cutting, yeah. I I tried craft foam before, but it to me it doesn't quip, it doesn't give that crisp that i get with the pink you know the that pink uh material the kind of a mm-hmm. rubber material yeah uh, i mean you have to there's a i've been working with it for years mm-hmm. so i have pretty much perfected how to work with it yeah a lot of my fabric is printed with the craft foam so oh, wow. it's a combination of using the right ink or modifying your ink Mm -hmm. and you know because i don't use traditional um block printing ink um the speedball one is pretty much at least for fabric that's Mm -hmm. the only one available Mm -hmm. on the market um and i don't like it very Mm much i don't like them no i can't get the range of colors i want and because it's oil based the smell bothers me yeah uh, it bothers my sinuses, so I don't tend to use that. So I've learned how to modify uh, textile inks mm. to where I can print pretty well. So do you it. use a mix of paints? Yes. Um, a lot of times I'll, I'll use like the Speedball uh, print, screen printing inks. Uh, those work really well and it's opaque and, you know, you can get a good range of colors. Mm-hmm. Um, there's other textile paints and inks that I found online. Um, uh, that also, I, I don't know if it's good quality because, of course, I'm not a fabric printer. But um, Michael's has some fabric paints. Have yes, you tried those? Paints, I yes. don't remember I the name. Anything. Anything you see. <laughs> I've used house paint. Um, even oh, wow. you know. Yeah, so I'll try. I'll try anything. Um, mm-hmm. House paint works really well if you modify it properly. Mm-hmm. You know, so I've tried all types of paints. Anytime I see a new paint, I will see if I can make it work. So, uh-huh. so yeah. let me show first your Instagram. So, looking, uh, mm-hmm. I have here. Uh, mm-hmm. I love that you're working also with textures, right? Um, yes. So I'm now for, you know, for the people that have access to the video on Patreon, we are showing her Instagram, but you can access her Instagram and I'll put on the notes for you guys and on the uh, on the notes of the podcast. Mm-hmm. So what is that here that you're working with this uh, texture? So um, that... Is- to, to get that raised uh, look, the, first of all, it's not on fabric. This is, yeah. I'm creating uh, wall art. Wall so art. 
Yeah, so to get that texture, it's a mixture of joint compound and glue. Well, mm, yeah, yeah, either joint compound and glue or plaster of Paris oh, and wow. glue. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then I pull it through a stencil. Yeah, um, I worked with plaster before. It's kind of fun material. Yes, joint compound is really fun to work with. Yeah, I um, heard about that. I have to, to try to ex experiment with that with my abstract. Uh, we're going to show your website, but... You don't mm -hmm. have now available, but when I saw that you have plant. Um, oh, the plant pot covers. Uh, <laughs> I was like, oh, that is so good. Are you going to have those back? <laughs> yeah, I'm. Ah, uh, I thought I had some on there. But I have to check. I didn't you know, see. And oh. I love that you show on your Instagram the, the things that you are, you know, the prints that you're creating with the uh, carving that you do. Um, mm -hmm. Where do you get your inspiration? Is that from your background? Yes, um, a lot of it is my background. Um, and really what it is for me, for a long time, I wasn't sure that I was an artist because mm. I don't draw, like I can draw, but mm -hmm. it's not, it's not my, it's not what I like to do. Right. The most, I don't draw realistically. I don't, draw like you know I, i'm not into the photorealism and right. i'm not into perfect lines if you if you notice a lot of my lines are wonky and yeah. crooked to me that is beautiful well yeah and, because also i think it gives a touch of someone did this yes it's it was human. not a machine right exactly and that's and why said, you know, i love so much carving because mm -hmm. the carving is different than a stamp. Why a stamp was made by a machine and it's so perfect, right? Mm -hmm. And when mm -hmm. we carve, it's our hand that and sometimes is imperfect, especially like me that I don't have experience carving. I just sometimes mm -hmm. do little bits just to play with my paints, you know? Right. But um, I, I think it, it extraordinary touch to see that Thank someone you. actually did that. Mm-hmm. And, and that's what drew me to it. It really freed me up to create and not worry about, you know, perfection, not worry about is this line straight. I follow some other printmakers who their work is outstanding as far as the lines are perfect and crisp. And mm -hmm. that's great for them, but that's not what I do. And it yeah. took me a while to understand that that's mm -hmm. what they do and this is what I do. Yeah, that's what I want to do. Yeah. Yeah. And so once I realized that it really took me, you know, it really opened up my ability to be creative because then I wasn't bogged down with, oh, this line needs to be perfectly straight. Mm -hmm. In fact, you know, I could make it perfectly straight. I could go on the computer and design the motif and print it out and transfer it to my block and carve it. Mm -hmm. It still wouldn't be perfect because just the act of part carving Yes. Um, you're going to, your hand's going to slip, you know, yeah. sometimes. Mm -hmm. It's just you know, what it's going to do. So, you know, I really enjoy that I can create something and, you know, even if it doesn't line up perfectly, that's fine. Mm -hmm. you know? So this fabric here that we see hanging, and are these mm -hmm. baskets or are these the plant, um, the, the plant, plant covers? Yes. Oh, mm -hmm. I love them. Uh, <laughs> it's funny everybody loves them it, the uh, vase covers and this fabric so these are done by hand like you don't send your design and somebody does nope. it for you so these are all by yeah, hand that, so you, everything you see there is done by hand yes so you you have a sewing machine like you do that mm -hmm. oh wow um, and that's probably why there's not more on the website because I really need someone to sew for me. I don't yeah. want to do that part. <laughs> yeah, sewing is a little hectic. Yeah, I um, can do it, but I don't want to do it repeatedly. You know what I was thinking? This plain covers here, they could also work as baskets. Yeah, they're they're really just fabric oh, buckets. Oh, wow. Look at this. Yeah, yeah that's true. Uh, oh, yeah, this is wood, uh, woodwork. Yes. So mm -hmm. do you print on the wood? Yep. Oh, wow. Uh, in fact, there's a video not too far from there where I show myself printing. I think it's that one, right? Scroll back up. Uh, it's right next to, it's two over from the trees. The next one. Yeah, this that one? one. 
yeah, if you click on it and and play it, it'll oh, use you see. Oh, see. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yes. Yeah, so. Oh, yes, yes. Oh, amazing. I love that color. Yeah. All right. Wow. Like, I love this right. carving. And you, I see you put them in a base, right? The rubber, you put them in a base. I heard, yeah, people, I, I heard about people doing that. Uh, the to put a backing, yeah, that's yeah. um craft foam, that's a foam stamp. Oh, so yeah, wow. in order for me, I use a uh a, a soldering iron uh, yes. to make the marks. Wow, yeah, so that's it works really get. nicely with. Wow, I'm impressed with this foam print. Yeah, that. so with the, yeah, like I said, I've tried a lot of different things and I've learned what works and what doesn't as much mm, or this. or something that I thought didn't work and then I tried it again a different way and it worked. I can see that you like a pattern of colors. Like yeah. I see your work has a lot of blue and orange yes. and red, right? Yes. And is that something that comes natural to you or is that intentional? Um, yeah, I just, I love vibrant colors. Yeah. I just do. And I gravitate yeah, towards, the, yeah, I gravitate towards the reds, yellows, blues. I've tried to incorporate purples. Look at them. <laughs> I'm just. Yeah, those have been really popular at shows. Oh my things. gosh, you have to put more of those. It's just, I will. oh it's just my good. gosh, you have, it's you have bags as well. I did. I haven't put any out. They in a sold while. out. I'm sure they sold out. They did. <laughs> they did. They are I'm beautiful. Kind of, what fabric uh, is that? What fabric is that? It looks like a linen. Is that well, so very thick, that, right? Canvas or canvas? Yeah, that's canvas. Yeah, it looks beautiful. So canvas with leather handles. I love this pattern. Yeah. Yeah. I and I like combining colors that are totally different like like yeah. that blue to me mm -hmm. just brings out like it just adds something yeah and people were commenting that they love the color combo yeah it's yeah. a it's a combo that works for sure love yes. love bags we are showing a pillow here and mm -hmm. i love that you don't you don't have a lot of this traditional patterns um mm -hmm the way people do it. Like I see you transpose the shapes on top of each other or mm -hmm. out of line. Um, right. I love that. I think it gives kind of a movement to the piece. And that, yes, because when I first started, I used to feel bad because, oh, you know, cause in the surface pattern world, right? to me, a lot of the work is very um, similar. Mm -hmm. And so, once I gave myself permission to do whatever I want, then that's when things change. Yeah. And here I'm showing you have also a fabric shop at the Spoonflower, which, yes. um, you know, the fabric are great because I've um, had some fabric there before and mm -hmm. I bought some fabric and these fabrics are great because I also love to buy fabric like this to do journal covers, you know, mm -hmm. art journal covers. Mm. But I obsessed with this, just obsessed. <laughs> What's funny, I just made that, um, it, it was like Look a rectangular that. piece of wood I had. I just painted on it and then I scanned it and I was like, hey, this makes a really cool pattern when yeah. it's repeated. Yeah. And so oh, look at that. That's what that. Yeah. So is this a sample so you can actually buy this with the fabric? the the uh cover for the bed you can um see the way spoon flower works is that along the top what what's great and what what's not so great about spoon flower it's a great way to get your fabric designs out there mm -hmm. but the commission unless you're selling in volume yeah the commission is not great um for the designer which i understand because they're fronting the they're footing the money to get the stuff produced. Mm -hmm. So I understand that. But along the top, you see where it says fabric, wallpaper, living yeah. decor. So then you, you can, can order with the yeah, fabric. You can order any of those ah, prints. I thought you can just fabric. buy the fabric. Ah. Yeah, you can buy the fabric or you can buy it as already made. Uh, like what we showed here, a pillow or. Yeah, 
Yeah. Okay. Wow, that is awesome. Yeah, so... I love this one. Um, yeah. This one also is fun. Mm -hmm. I yeah, I love that print so much. Oh, look at that. Did you carve yeah. this? Yes, I carved the stamp and uh, scanned in the design when it was done. Oh, wow. So where do you think your inspiration come from? Seeing all this um, vibrance and these shapes, you, ve you have very unique shapes as well. As you said, mm -hmm. it's, you know, you said before that African patterns are, are in trend, mm -hmm. but I don't think as trendy as they should be. <laughs> mm -hmm. Maybe a little bit, but mm -hmm. I think it's just maybe getting started and I hope it's not just a phase. Um, yeah, it's not too. Um, um, but I, I hope there would be more because they are mm -hmm. so intriguing yes. and different, right? But where do you get your inspiration for, for these um, patterns? Well, so a lot of times I will look at, I'll look at African art and patterns, but the thing with me is I'm never going to just directly copy. Mm -hmm. um, so if I see a shape or a motif that I really love, then I change, I, I, I may start off, even if I say I'm going to do this exact motif, mm -hmm. my something in me will not let me do that. Right. Um, so I will somehow during the process of drawing it, I will vary it. I, it's always for me, it's always what if, what if instead of this line going here, what if it went there? Mm -hmm. What if instead of this shape being round, it's more oval, mm -hmm. you know, so, and sometimes I will just, um, start cutting shapes, mm -hmm. um, and arranging them and seeing how it looks. And once I've got the shape, then I add the details like that stamp you're looking at in the mm -hmm. middle, you know, it was just that shape. And then mm -hmm. I start, I, I start doodling almost mm -hmm. like, okay, let me draw some lines here. Let me put some dots here. Uh, let me, uh, do like, uh, echo lines inside, you know? So a lot of times I'll just sit down and just start mm -hmm. you know, drawing yeah. and figuring out the shapes. Yes. And here I'm showing her website, which you're also going to have on the notes there for you guys to check. I would keep, uh, when you restock, do you send to your newsletter? Cause mm -hmm. definitely. Yeah, I think you guys have to be on that to see what she has. Yeah, um, it's it's crazy because my online shop never reflects all the things I have because a lot of times I do um, pop up shows. Um, ah. I do live shows, so, so a lot of times I'm like, okay, I need to make some stuff for this upcoming show. Yeah, and so because we my just have one show. pot flower, one pot cover here. I know. I'm surprised by that. I have to go back and you have to put the ones that to... have color. Yes, I let need me to, um... let me know when you put some there. I will I will sign up for your newsletter. So okay, great. Um, yes. yeah. Right now, I mean it's good. That means it's sold. But right now your website. <laughs> but yeah, keep her website in. Sign up more. to the newsletter, and yes, um, yeah. There's just one. And there is some wood things here. Oh, oh, nice idea here. I like it. Yeah, that's one of my new favorite things. It's a, a wall hook, but with her uh, design. Yeah, pretty cool. Mm -hmm. And where do you, do you like sketch, like when you're thinking about, okay, I wanna, you know, carve something, create a pattern. Uh, do you regularly sketch? How is the, the process with that? Well, by sketching, if you mean going directly to carving, then no, yeah. <laughs> like on the paper, do you, I mean, just sometimes like think about shapes and just put that in later you carve or you just think about when you're going to actually carve. Uh, a lot of times I just get the urge to carve. I mostly just go directly to carving. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Because wow. I feel like a lot wow. of times I'm not, I'm not very precious about, oh, you know, this didn't come out right or whatever. I, you know, if I'm, if, if I make a mistake, I just embrace that or, you know, but a lot of times I don't, I don't necessarily. I mean, seriously, I'm showing her Instagram yeah. here. Where are these bags? 
Where are they? <laughs> they need to be made. That's what... <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sad looking at all this amazing stuff. I'm sorry, I cut you off, but I'm like, seriously. No, you... uh, yeah, I just have a lot more. Um... I'm showing here her show. Um, I think as you put here, downtown Dayton, right? And you have yes. this show. These people are lucky. I mean, <laughs> seriously. Um, I just love these cloths. Um, it's amazing work, Itunde. Amazing work. Thank you. Um, Thank you. I just obsessed with your colors. You know, the Brazilian me. I, oh, I can't right. help I'm it. Like, why be boring? Like colors. Yeah. To, oh. Oh, love this. Love the shots of your studio there preparing things. I think this is so important. Sometimes, um, we artists um, don't want to show the mess or how we get things done. I think especially mm. important in printmaking because, look at this. You are like stamping each of this designs yes. there on the fabric really it is a to... lot of work it is it a, is. a work of love really it's it's just mm -hmm. amazing and sometimes people can think oh i could buy a bag on target for like way less but yeah nobody was stamping hand by hand right. the design for you this was produced way far we know where and yeah. um it's amazing to see the the process do you yes. teach locally or, or no? Yep. You just in fact, see that wine bottle you just passed. Okay. That's oh, this is a class. One of my workshops. Is that locally? So, you do local? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So how um, do people know about this? Like they, they check on your Instagram, the locals, um, also your yeah, fairs well, when I you go to the market. Like, when I have the workshops scheduled, I'll put it on Instagram or my I'll newsletter. Look at it here. Yeah. And I have a separate um, Instagram for uh, for the workshops. It's called oh. Studio A. Oh, I have to put that on the notes. Okay. Yeah. I'm gonna look um, for that. So these yeah, are, it's called Studio A. These so, are the students here. Yes. Um, I was doing a lot of workshops last summer, and when it looked yeah. like things were getting better, and then it oh, kind of started getting worse, and so I pause but so as as we are here on black history month um how do you see black artists you know in the printmaking space to be able to have fabrics and space on the fabric market and this kind of print market done because i i don't see a lot of people of color in the printmaking market yeah there's there's not a, a lot, especially specifically printmaking and in fabric, you know, printmaking or even just fabric design in general. There's mm -hmm. um, there's a few uh, that are prominently known, um, but to my knowledge, not a lot. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, that's something that I I don't know. I don't know what the answer is to that. I mean, for me. When, like I said, when I first um, started, my thing was I was going to be a textile designer. That's, mm. oh my gosh, that's what I wanted to do. That was your focus, but, right? Yeah. But then, you know, I didn't see, first of all, I didn't really know how to get in it. Mm. Um, and then as I did research, there are people who offer courses and all that, but it didn't feel like it was something for me because like I said, the work, um, the textile design, um, the fabric design world, it seems like it's all very one note, like a lot of flowers, cutesy yeah. animals, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And That's I true. didn't, yeah, I submitted to a few places. Okay. Yeah. I know it's a numbers game. You got to submit more, but I was submitting, but I didn't see any companies that looked like they would produce mm -hmm. Know, the kind of work that I make. Yeah, it's, I think, I don't know, I'm not familiar with this space, but you, it, when you're talking, it makes me uh, think about galleries, right? As an artist, mm -hmm. like, um, I have trouble with them because first of all, I think they're very elitist, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. just for people that have money. Mm -hmm. And um, I believe that culture, especially growing you know, poor in Brazil, I believe that we should have more access to art. Mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. but also I think the problem of galleries nowadays, and I was, I was talking with an artist from London, um, a black artist called Bokani, and she was saying the same thing, is because they have an idea of the art they want, and mm-hmm. what they think their people want, but it's the mm-hmm. same kind of style. Mm-hmm. They don't accept that different style, and to also range a little bit the people that they attract. They want to keep attracting the same people. Right. Mm-hmm. And to me, it's very it's not enough because I don't think they attract pe- people of color. They don't attract me as a Latina. Right. Mm-hmm. So I do also work in very bold colors. And sometimes I don't see that on galleries. Right. I see mm-hmm. that same like pastel colors or like, you know, tone colors or what mm-hmm. they call elegant colors. And I'm like, mm-hmm. you know, it's it's hard. Mm-hmm. It's hard. Because I think that's why we end up going with ourselves because in yeah. trying to do the work ourselves that I was tr- uh, talking with Bocani because she said, well, I'm not going to I'm not going to wait for them. I'm going to do pop up galleries myself. So she mm-hmm. started contacting libraries and places mm-hmm. and, you know, doing her kind of gallery. Right. And that's the thing, like every time I do a show or anything, people are so drawn to my work. But then that doesn't translate to the fabric design world. Yeah. Like, because you know, they even, are very, yep. They yeah, think people just want flowers or. Yeah, even because I, I just, I don't want to draw flowers. I don't, I just don't. And if I do, it's going to be in my own way. It's mm-hmm. not going to be these pretty whimsical flowers. And that's what I see everywhere. I do and pretty even, flowers. I do pretty huh? flowers. I like flowers. Oh. <laughs> but I know what you're saying. And it's very yeah. a very graphic looking flower. The kind of mm-hmm. graphic design done on Procreate on iPad. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah, yeah. Um so it's I mean, for me, as you said, how to go to a, a fabric place and you don't you are a black person, you don't see anything related to you or your ancestors mm-hmm. or the colors that you like. Mm-hmm. Right, we 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 are not represented. I don't see anything like I grew up in this fabric places, right? Well, for me, the way I see it, like I don't necessarily have to see other black people doing what I'm doing mm-hmm. to be able to do it. I don't mind being the first, but the thing is that will they be open to me? Will they mm-hmm. print my work? Will they sign me on? That's yes. what I'm more concerned with. Yes. You know, yes. because I, like I said, I've submitted to places and never heard back. You know, if, you know, they want, like, I I like making my things the way I like to make them. And clearly people like, like your designs because yeah. you are selling these places and you cannot keep up with your website doesn't have the pot flower. Yeah, holder. I, and, it's, it's so bad. you know, so <laughs> it's, it's not really what people want. It's what yeah. they want. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, because and... I get great responses when I take my work out there. Mm-hmm. But I imagine when I approach the companies, then I don't, they're not interested. Well, and that's why I understand that spoon flour is, it cannot be the cheapest way, but I it's appreciate a... having services like that. Yes, because I, I do too. Because not just you can create fabric in a more productive way to do like, you know, if I want to do like I showed here a bed cover, right? Because that is hard for you to do in your house. Right. But I also think it opened the eyes of other people that are hiring printmakers, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Well... I, it's funny because I've no, I've not gotten a job in fabric uh, design ever, mm-hmm. but my work has been used in other ways. Mm-hmm. I've been licensed. You know, we have a local um, a food co-op that mm-hmm. we just opened here that retained me and licensed my work to mm-hmm. use on the building. Mm-hmm. So you can actually see, you know, as you drive up to it, these oh, big, wow. beautiful colors. It's on my Instagram. That's you might cool. have to scroll down a bit. Yeah. Uh, it just opened this last year. It's coming up in a year. 
So they used um, my patterns on the exterior of the building, mm -hmm. as well as inside. I did all the the department foot signs, like mm -hmm. you know, uh, dairy or meat or whatever. So I helped mm -hmm. design all that. Um, so yeah, people are taking notice. People do like that stuff. It's just how how do you think artists can uh, can spread their word about their job locally, like you were doing? I just, I say yes to a lot of things. Mm -hmm. I, you know, like you asked, you approached me for the podcast. Sure. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know what your listenership is and that doesn't matter. Any opportunity to talk about right. what I do, yeah. I'll take it. Mm -hmm. um, I do a lot of like, you know, speaking, like I said, anytime I'm approached to come and talk about it or present somewhere. I say yes. Mm -hmm. And I think it's on the artist as well to put themselves out there. Yes. You definitely. have to put yourself out there. Yeah. You, you feel quietly in your house because and you're still working. But not just that. Work. We cannot wait galleries or companies or, you know, be willing to take our job because they don't want a diversity in their right. designs. It's not right. just diversity of who is creating, but diversity in the designs. We need diversity in designs. Right. Exactly. We are very... Uh, you know, the population nowadays is so different, but we have some institutions that they keep having the same products mm -hmm. and the same designs. Mm -hmm. And, and um, too, I noticed even when they do the diversity thing, yeah, it's still very muted. It's still very, mm -hmm. you know, in the I way agree. that they want it. I agree. You know? Yeah. Um, it's kind of talking about Latino, uh, Month, month or something, but they just think about Cinco de Mayo, and I'm like, that has nothing right. to There's do with me. A lot of different. I don't even speak Spanish. Latino, right? Right. So <laughs> it's people like... never think Brazilians are. Uh, I don't even know if it's Latino or Hispanic. Which word? We are Latinos. We are not right. Hispanic. We are exactly. Latinos. We are not Hispanic because we don't speak Spanish. So right. Um. So when you have the heritage month of Latin culture and you just have Cinco de Mayo stuff or mm -hmm. uh, sombrero of a Mexican guy. Right. I mean, good, but that it's doesn't represent great, me. That's not all of it. <laughs> right, exactly. So um, I, I think that the only way um, this could change is, as you said, you have to keep, we have to keep saying yes, but also I think, as you said, even they say, no, we have to keep approaching places. And, mm -hmm. you know, as the artists that I talk to here, Bukani, like the library want to do it, go to the library, you know? Yeah. And if a restaurant, a cafe want to do it, go to the cafe. Yeah. You know? And, and I think... now more than ever, there's so many ways to get your work. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. So many options. Oh, yes. So, yeah, so we might not even need the gallery as much as we used to you mm -hmm. know i think we'll always need the gallery but not as much as we used to you so know, tell me time. you know this podcast is gonna take a little bit to go live mm -hmm. because i am one woman doing everything <laughs> yep i know that story <laughs> um but to tell what is coming up what is your uh goals for this year my goals for this year is to keep making art and um because I've been leaning in more towards the art making process. Mm -hmm. So I would like to exhibit. Um, there's a few calls. Because I I've... saw you have one abstract in your website. <laughs> yes. Is that I... means you're going to do more? Is that what you want? Yes. I've got some that I'm working on right now. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the, the, the thing is knowing when it's done. Mm -hmm. So when it's done, yes. then it goes up. <laughs> It's like, how do I know when it's done? Well, it's done when it's done. So yeah, um, you know, I'm working. Do you on... have more local shows that you're gonna have this year? Yes, um, and also this, I'm working on one out of state. Um, so I'm working on just exhibiting more. Mm -hmm. uh, it took me a little while to get my mind back from the holidays. So yeah, um, all of us. Yeah, once the calendar starts filling up, then. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, okay, got to get stuff done. So, yeah. And just, you know, get, like you said, getting product on the website is mm -hmm. important. 
And are you going to have more classes uh, locally this yes. year? Yes. Uh, in fact, I am planning uh, some workshops coming up. Um, you know, people have asked for virtual workshops and I don't know, I just kind of, I really like interacting with the people uh, in a live, you know, in person. Yeah, it's you know. different. It is yeah, different. so maybe I'll just, maybe I'll take the show on the road, go to different states or something. Mm -hmm. I don't know, but um, yes, there's definitely more in-person workshops coming. But probably and, it's easier also yeah. to work on the states closer to you, so you can right. even yes. like drive there. And... Right, like even within Ohio, there's Cincinnati, there's Columbus. Exactly, there's yeah. Houston. Those yeah. are big cities, so mm -hmm. yeah. So uh, do you keep people updated of what's going on on your newsletter or is more on your Instagram? Um, up until now, I've been, Instagram has been really easy for me, but I'm noticing lower and lower engagement. Mm -hmm. So I'm going more towards newsletter now. I sent one, I'm, I'm working on doing one a month. Mm -hmm. I think I can commit to one per month. So I sent one in February and I'll be sending another one beginning of uh, March mm -hmm. uh, because yeah, these, these social media platforms, they give it and they take it away. So yes. uh, yeah, but I'm just noticing a lot less engagement than before. Yeah. So, but just so people can know when you have restocks on your website and new right, products, yes. um, restocks, that you have... um, just what's going on behind the scenes mm -hmm. and yes. So okay. that's, Yes, the newsletter yes. is a great way to keep And in I touch. will put as well the other account which is related to uh, workshops. So if you are local in Ohio, yes. you can certainly have fun with you, Tonde, and, uh, mm -hmm. you know, learn a little bit of this magical thing of printing. Um, yes, so Uta fun. And... You, Tonde, thank you so much for coming to the podcast. It was thank such you. a good uh, interview. I just loved, loved your work. Um, thank you so much and... for checking. I out. will be waiting for pot covers. Yeah. I yes, definitely. <laughs> As yeah, people can see, asking. I'm obsessed with them. <laughs> All right. uh, but everything yeah. you do is just beautiful. Just beautiful. Thank people you. in Ohio are very fortunate to see them up close. <laughs> Thank yeah. you so much. But keep updating us also on the Instagram, you know, don't get um frustrated because people that love you, they're gonna follow you. And if they wanna keep up your designs, they, they're going to mm -hmm. be there. They'll be there. Yep. You're right about that. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. But thank you so much. I appreciate thank it. Thank you for having me. I really enjoyed talking to you. <laughs>